Hello, so this is a um, thing for Hispanic Heritage Bunch for 2021. It says Latinos lead. I figured I would share this um, video because I think it's kind of interesting. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Hispanic Heritage Month at the White House. The theme for today is Latinos leading. My name is Cristobal Alex. I'm the White House Deputy Cabinet Secretary. I'll be your moderator today. Uh, let me start off by just saying very briefly, Hispanic culture is part of American culture. We celebrate that every single day here at the White House and throughout this administration, and especially this month. Hispanic Heritage Month is about celebrating the contributions of Latinos, whether that's in our jobs, our economy, our arts, our culture, in science, in our military, in our democracy. It's also about honoring and remembering the journeys of our families and the sacrifices that they've made. Uh, but it's not all about a celebration. Um, let's be honest with each other. Hispanics have been through a lot during this pandemic. That's why President Biden is making equity a top priority and ensuring that Latinos are front and center in the work to uplift the lives of working Americans across the country through his Build Back Better agenda. President Biden's historic cabinet reflects the diversity of our nation. He's a man of his word. He said he wants this administration to look like the country, to reflect the country, and it certainly does. We're very proud of our historic cabinet. That includes four Hispanics who are leading on key policy issues, and I'm honored to have them with us here today. To my right is Secretary Becerra, Secretary of Health and Human Services, Dr. Cardona, the Secretary of Education, in just a little while, Ali Mayorkas will be joining us, the Secretary of Homeland Security, and of course, Isabel Guzman, the Administrator of the Small Business Administration. Thank you for joining us today. I'm going to start us off by asking two quick questions to our guests, and then we're going to go to our audience for more questions. So, my first question is, tell me about how your career journey got into this leadership moment. Go ahead, Secretary Mercedes. I suspect, like uh, the other members of the cabinet, uh, you saw it, it was more a matter of just always believing that you could do more and make a difference. For me, it's always been about trying to pay back. Uh, I am, as always, the most first in my family to get to go to a university, get that college diploma. Uh, I have an experience where no one would have expected me to be able to become a professional the way I did. And so for me, it's always a matter of saying thank you. And so uh, probably the first thing I should do is say thank you to those who are watching because I know some of you made calls when you were hearing about whom the president might nominate for different positions. I know a lot of you probably were in your way and saying, you got to get uh, the, the administrator to be Guzman. You've got to get the secretary of education to be Arizona. you got to get, you know, maybe I'll get the set on there. And so I thank you for what you've done. But it's one of those journeys where if you just try to make a difference and pay back, you get rewarded. Thank you. Dr. Cullen. That's great. Thank you. And happy this has been a great month. Uh, what an honor to be here and to be a part of this program. Thank you for doing this. For me, my, my life's journey, similar to uh, my colleague over here, Javier, you know, I came from a family uh, that was committed to working hard, to providing opportunities for the next generation, and to serve the community. So my parents came from Puerto Rico when they were very young, and they tried to make opportunities for their children here in, in, in the mainland. And for me, that opportunity was through schools. I, I uh, had a teacher that tapped me on the shoulder and said, consider education. I knew I wanted to serve the community that gave me so much. So I became a teacher, then a principal, and kind of just went up, uh, up the ranks there in the same community where I was born and raised. Um, it's really about service for me. And that's something that was modeled uh, by my parents and by uh, a lot of my Puerto Rican family that they give back to the community that's given them so much. So, that's what kind of got me going. Yeah, and I think for me it's a similar but rooted in uh, entrepreneurship and small business. I was uh, raised by an entrepreneur, a small business family, and uh, yeah, I know that uh, those things are 
are so uh, you know, just embedded in our culture in terms of serving community, but small businesses in particular, they define our main streets, they create communities, they create these local jobs, they hire locally, uh, and I think being a part of the community in such an intense way from an early age really was foundational. So, you know, today as we you know, celebrate Spring Heritage Month, and, and also, by the way, National Small Business Week, uh, but, you know, really it's a time to reflect on that and, you know, uh, my, my father, I like to say, went to school and got his education on the GI Bill, and I went to school on entrepreneurship. Uh, and I think I, I would always you need know, to start small, dream big, uh, but I couldn't have dreamed this position, but really I think it was formative along my way that I was always trying to be that voice and that advocate. Uh, my mom always instilled in me uh, to speak up for myself and to speak up for others, and I think uh, being an advocate for small businesses, I think, just became a you know, second nature to me because I had such passion and understanding for what it takes to start and the grit and determination it takes to grow uh, that I uh, you know, naturally fell into it. And uh, it's been such an honor to serve in this cabinet, this diverse cabinet, as well as this administration with uh, President Biden and Vice President Harris, this commitment to small business and opportunity and really helping us all achieve the American dream. Thank you, Administrator. Um, you know, right before we started uh, this roundtable, we had a, a closed press uh, uh, event just for appointees, um, and it was beautiful to see the mosaic on the screen uh, of Latinos in leadership positions throughout the administration. So I want to I want to come back and, and and ask our panel here: Why is it so important to have Latinos like yourselves at the table making these critical issue these decisions that affect so many in our community and beyond? Well, because the range of options and the choice that we make will set the course for the country for a long time. There's not just one answer, and it's a question of which choice will be selected. And if you've got a diversity of views, a diversity of experience in the room, working with the president, the chances are you're going to hit the sweet spot with your, with your final decision because if you incorporated people who come from the various experiences, you're not going to leave people out. And it used to be the case where I think we would look at the table of leaders and say, we're not sitting there. I think President Biden did us a, a great favor as Latinos and make sure we were sitting at the table. I appreciate that, Secretary. You know, the very first time I met you when I moved to Washington, it was actually in this building. And I was wide-eyed and amazed by, by just being here. And, and I was so impressed by you because in that meeting, we were calling to task everybody in the room to do better to make sure that our voices were heard and that we had our hand there around the table. So thank you for, for all of our continuing to this day. Secretary. Yeah, my, my upbringing and my cultural experiences have really influenced my whole career trajectory. You know, being a bilingual and bicultural, uh, allow me to see things differently and, and understand different perspectives and listen differently because I understand there's different ways of doing things. And if that's why I think, you know, regardless of where I'm having conversation, from the barrio to the briefing room, it's the same uh, thinking. Like, people come in with different strengths and having grown up in a, in a bicultural home in an environment that was very diverse uh, gave me an opportunity to look at different perspectives and really make sure that we're working collaboratively to get to the best end result. And as you said, I think that was intentional design by the president to make sure the cabinet reflects the diversity of our country so we have unique perspectives and different backgrounds as we make decisions for, the, in my case, the students across the country. Thank you, and we're so lucky to have you in that role with over a quarter of students, as I understand public schools being lucky on having you there fighting for us every single day. Administrator. I mean, I think it's a really respect my colleagues' uh, answers there because I think that's you know true. It does really define who we are and what the ideas that we bring to the table. And we know that diverse teams perform better. And so I think it was a my decision to, uh, especially considering the trajectory of our country, um, on small business in particular, Latinos are starting businesses at the highest rates, and especially uh, Latino the women of uh, our community. And so with those high rates, we need to be able to, from our own perspective. Uh, see uh, what it takes to become an entrepreneur from different communities that maybe face different barriers and being able to put yourself in their shoes and uh, relate. And so I bring all my personal experiences to the table for multiple communities to really relate to and understand uh, what it means to come from what I like to call these underdog communities that have had to really uh, you know, use all their grit, determination, all their resources, get creative. 
uh, that's really entrepreneurship in its essence to, to be able to you know, perform with limited uh, and still achieve success. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what I want to do next is uh, now turn to our audience, our virtual audience here. Uh, first, uh, we have a question for Secretary Vecera from Veronica Flores Diaz, who's a registered nurse and dreamer based in Chicago. Turning to you. I think you're muted. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. So, um, my name is Veronica, and I am a dreamer and a registered nurse. Um, I've been working for the COVID 19 response of um, for Esperanza Health Centers. This is a clinic in Chicago uh, where we serve the underserved communities in Chicago. So, my question is how is the administration making healthcare costs more affordable for working families and for individ individuals without insurance? Well, first, Veronica, thank you. I think this is an important question, not just for Latino community, but any underprivileged community. Um, like myself, I have health insurance, but there's a lot of communities where that's not possible for everyone to have health insurance. Thank you for being a nurse, but more importantly, as a dreamer, for getting to be a nurse. Because uh, I think a lot of us live with pride at what the dreamers have done. I think the, the dreamers proved that you can earn a spot in this country. And I think, uh, I suspect that before too much time is over, uh, the White House may be occupied by a dream. So do not be surprised. Uh, in terms of the question, what I will tell you is that if you look at what has happened on COVID, you'll see the difference that <laughs> the president has made that we can all make. Uh, it wasn't always the case that everyone in America whether you were a citizen or not, regardless of your income, your zip code, or your status, you would have access to the services and programs that were made available by the U.S. government. President Biden hasn't asked, show me your papers in order to get a vaccine. He has vaccinated everyone. President Biden isn't saying that we're not going to reach out to you to try to make sure that you stay safe when it comes to all the policy, whether it's masking, the social distancing, getting to go to school, it is for everyone. And right now, we are doing not just the COVID work to make sure that people get on board. And by the way, Latinos are now oversubscribing when it comes to getting the vaccination because I think they're seeing how important it really is. So our numbers are going up in terms of vaccination. But at the same time, today we announced the results of the president's special enrollment period under the Affordable Care Act to try to get more people on board. Last year around this time, about 10% of the people who were getting new insurance policies under the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, were Latinos. This year, the president said, we're going to reach out to the communities that have often been left behind. The number of Latinos who subscribed this year, double what we saw last time. 20% of all those who came on board to get a new policy were Latinos. That wasn't an accident. It was intentional because we were reaching out to everyone to make sure that everyone has access to good health care. Veronica, thank you so much for your question uh, and your leadership. Uh, and I see that we are joined uh, by Secretary Mayorkas as well. Uh, thank you, sir, for joining us uh, today. Uh, I know you are dealing with some very urgent matters and making time for us today. And Hispanic Heritage Month is so important to our community. Um, our, our next question uh, goes to Secretary Cardona, uh, and it comes from Kelly Gonez with the Los Angeles Board of Education. Kelly, please. Hey, um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kelly Gonez. I am the board president of our school board here in Los Angeles, and I have to say it's so inspiring um, to hear from such amazing leaders. Um, representation matters now more than ever, so I know our public school students are so well served um, to have Secretary Gardona as our Secretary of Education. Um, Secretary Gardona, this back to school season has truly been unlike any other filled with hope and excitement as our students return to our classrooms, but with new concerns about the Delta variant and how to ensure the safety of our school communities. How is the Biden administration working to support students, families, and educators in our public schools as we begin this unprecedented school year? Well, thank you, Kelly. And first of all, thank you for your leadership. Uh, I can look to your district as an example of what we should be doing across the country. And that's why your students are in school uninterrupted because of your leadership on the board there. So thank you for your leadership. I know it's not easy, 
uh, but what you're doing at the ground level is why children are finding success in your district. So thank you. The, the, the Biden administration, the, the, the whole of government approach to keeping our students safe is working because we know that with the guidance from CDC and with the funds from the American Rescue Plan, $130 billion um, to safely reopen schools means that we don't have to worry about PPE shortages. We have testing protocols funding $10 billion in testing alone um, so that our students can be safe in their schools. There's funds there for air quality uh, improvements. Um, there's, we know vaccinations work. So the president was quick to announce a vaccination challenge uh, for colleges and for schools. And we have in areas like yours where vaccination is really high, we're not seeing the spread in the community, which oftentimes trickles into our schools. So we're gonna keep monitoring it. We're gonna keep sharing information. We're gonna to continue to work closely with CDC to make sure that the information is in real time for our educators. Um, and we're gonna to listen to our health experts like CDC to make sure that we're doing everything in our power to keep our children in the classroom. Because as you know, Kelly, in-person learning is our best tool to fight the inequities that exist in our system. So keep up your great work. We'll keep supporting you. And we know that the American Rescue Plan and the guidance that's coming out of the education department will help in the process. Kelly, thank you for your question and all of your wonderful work in Los Angeles. Um, for, thank you. For our next question, we're going to go to Xiomara Stephanie Castro Ventura, who has more names than I do. Um, she's, a, she's a nurse assistant and was recently naturalized. Uh, the question is for Secretary Mayorkas. Go ahead. Good afternoon, I'm Yamara Castro, and I'm a um, United States citizen at the White House under the invitation of President Biden. My citizenship has allowed me to feel a uh, new freedom and increased security for my family and has given me the right to vote. Uh, and I'd like to ask a question. prior discriminated against. Do you mind? I'm sorry to interrupt. Infections for immigrants. Not. For, forgive me. We're, we're losing just a little bit. Would, would you mind uh, repeating the question, please? Maybe she turns off her video. No. Yeah. Just try once more, and perhaps turn off the video as as I give a uh, suggested. Um. We. We may have lost you here. Um, with your permission, uh, Simon, I think we lost you. I'm, I'm going to read your question, and then please jump in when you come back. Uh, the question here uh, for the secretary is, many in the community think the prior administration discriminated against the Hispanic community and didn't provide protections for immigrants nor opportunities for naturalization. What has this administration done to address equality create protections and promote naturalization. So, Lucia Mata, thank you so much for your uh, uh, for your question and congratulations on becoming a United States uh, citizen. I know that you enjoyed a ceremony far more elegant than the one that I went through in 1972. Um, uh, it is um, very important that uh, this is also Citizenship Awareness Month uh, on Friday. It is Citizenship Day. Uh, we have, across the federal government, a drive uh, to naturalize individuals who are eligible for it, to raise awareness of the power and strength and, uh, of citizenship, and to make citizenship more accessible to those who are otherwise disenfranchised. Fee waivers were very, were very aware of uh, the fact that naturalization can be cost prohibitive for many. Language access, uh, teaching um, uh, English as a second language, uh, primarily we're finding to an elderly demographic. We have so many different uh, efforts underway. I do want to just add one other, other point because there's so much going on in the immigration space because we are not only executing on our own vision, but also erasing um, the xenophobia and anti-immigrant sentiment and actions of the past uh, four years. You know, in the Department of Homeland Security, unless we, we issued a policy that unless one is actually 
quoting uh, or reciting specifically to the statutory language of immigration law, which uses the term illegal alien, that terminology is not uh, permitted in any of our discourse, written or verbal, that the language uh, that we use is non-citizen because it communicates something very important, which is the dignity of every individual, irrespective of their immigration status. So thanks so much and congratulations again, and I know you'll be an important voice in spreading the power uh, of citizenship. Thank you, Secretary. It means so much uh, to the community to have you in this role, uh, leading efforts on naturalization, leading efforts to keep us safe, uh, as someone uh, from El Paso, uh, a city that was targeted uh, by white supremacist hate that took the lives of 23 uh, individuals, I, I again think having you in this role uh, is so critical. Um, we look up to you. Um, our next question uh, is for Administrator Guzman, uh, and it comes from Taime and Jesus, who live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hi, um, our names are, we are Taime and Jesus Nanes. We are the 2020 SBA Emerging Small Business of the Year, or Person of the Year. Um, and we're the owners of Chuchos Red Tacos and the Farmhouse. And our question is? Um, the pandemic has been devastating for Latino owners, uh, Latino business owners, especially us small business owners. And how do we as Latino small business owners fit into the administration's plans for recovery and for beyond? Well, first off, it's National Small Business Week this week, so we're celebrating businesses like you that have been resilient. And I know you had to pivot and adapt to survive during this time, and so just congratulations. And we're pleased that we were able to access relief and, and use SBA programs uh, you know, throughout your foundation, so congrats. Uh, you know, I think that uh, you represent so many of our small businesses across the country. You're representative of them, and uh, we know that uh, entrepreneurship helps build wealth for individuals, their families, and communities at large. And so, uh, I've asked my team to be as entrepreneurial as the small businesses that we serve to make sure that we can deliver against President Biden's vision uh, to really create an economy that works for all of our small businesses. Uh, he likes to say that he knows that ideas come from everywhere and anywhere. He wants to make sure that we provide the support that they need in order to launch their businesses and grow their businesses. And was really excited to be able to implement American Rescue Plan, which included over $60 billion in support for our small businesses, additional PPP, our Patient Protection Program, that kept so many of our businesses and we and in fact, put more money into our smallest entities uh, this year with 96% of PPP loans this year going to those uh, small entities of 20 employees and under. Uh, it also included some great uh, resources for high impact industries like the Restaurant Revitalization Fund and the Shutter Vinnie's Operator Grant Program. And importantly, COVID Idol, which you know, the president just talked about his COVID action plan. We know how important it is to get vaccination rates up so that our small businesses can also stay open. Main streets can be uh, vibrant with people in our business centers and industrial centers. So we know how critical those investments in public health are. So thank you so much for all of that work. We. We know as well, though, that uh, in order for us to keep our economy open, our schools open, there, there needed to be some action. And so we have uh, still uh, billions of dollars remaining in our COVID idle program for, for small businesses. And we're trying to focus on how we can better serve underserved populations, meet them where they are, and understand the needs of those businesses who may not have access to capital, who may not be financially in the, in the right position to be able to access funds through a bank. Uh, so we're trying to think through the lens of all of our diverse businesses all of our diverse communities from rural to urban to make sure that we develop the programs and, and plans and implementation and outreach that really serve you well. And uh, President Biden is really committed to that equity when it comes to implementing on small business. And so uh, into the bipartisan infrastructure deal or his Build Back Better agenda, there is extensive support for small businesses from underserved communities to create capital programs that work for you so you can get loans and investments that can build your business. Because ultimately, we know that you create the jobs. Uh, Two-thirds of all net new jobs come from small businesses like yours, and Latino businesses are starting at such high rates. 
Uh, we need to make sure that we respect and understand the changing pace of entrepreneurship and serve you. So there's a huge role for the Latino community to help us build our economy back better with the jobs and uh, the wealth creation that they're going to continue to do. So thank you so much for your work. Yes, thank you both for your work uh, and for your excellent question. Uh, hope to visit your, your restaurant one of these days. I hope you have tacos al pastor there, which is my favorite. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Well, Actually, yeah. that's a good idea. Please come to the We'll bring the truck, yes. <laughs> I look forward to it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, we're running close uh, on time here, so um, I do want to do two things before we wrap up. One is to go back to Secretary Mayorkas. At the very beginning of our conversation, uh, we asked a question about how your lived experiences, your upbringing, your heritage have contributed to your leadership position today. Um, well, that, that um, uh, would prompt a very, very lengthy answer, and I know we don't have the time. I will just um, say this, that I try to uh, communicate to a workforce that is not accustomed to the emphasis on this um, personal situation, the fact that we deal with all too often a vulnerable population and understanding what vulnerability means and how a government should address it. That is very important. The power of how authorities address vulnerability and knowing what vulnerability is. Uh, is the ethic and value that we have to carry forward in our work. Um, and it goes back to the issue of the dignity of the individual, regardless of their status on the one hand, and also the fragility of life, uh, and how we can address both productively on behalf of an administration uh, that understands and propels the humanity of everyone. Thank you, sir. We're so lucky to have you in this role. Um, as we wrap up, I want to do one last thing, uh, which is to just go around the room one final time as we kick off Hispanic Heritage Month with the final message from this incredible historic cabinet. We'll go around and show you how you have a set up. Well, first, uh, I want to say thank you for letting us uh, be part of this dialogue with you. Second, I would say uh, if you want to know where a leader will take you, know where they come from. And I hope that what you will find is that President Biden chose people come from a place where it is important to pay back, to do more for others. The second thing I'd say is uh, I will only leave you with one word, which I grew up with, which I, I, I tell people about, uh, about all the time, because to me, it really encapsulates what this is all about, at least for me. And the word is ganas. Uh, to me, I tell people, don't look it up in the dictionary, it won't, it won't give you the full interpretation. To me, it means guts, grit, and game all packed together. Si tiene uno ganas, va a lograr. Si tiene uno ganas, va a cumplir. Si tiene uno ganas, va a repagar. And so I would just say to you, go at this with real ganas. Love that. Gracias. Please. So I will tell you that it was... Uh, 1998, and I was a career employee in the United States government, and there was a younger uh, Latino leader in California named Javier Becerra, uh, who gave me a very, very significant uh, opportunity uh, to become an appointee in, a, in the administration of uh, President Clinton. And now I am sitting across the table uh, from uh, Secretary Becerra, and I am sitting across the table from an individual who so well who uh, I don't know if all of you know um, and understand is a real engine of, um, of progress for our community and ensuring that the well-being of our community is uppermost in the minds of everyone in the White House. And I have to my right an individual who gives opportunity in the classroom uh, to uh, everyone in our community and um, so many others um, and understand so profoundly what a classroom means to the future of every individual. And uh, Secretary Guzman, um, who 
provides a path to prosperity regardless of current status. It's all about the future. Great. And, and you know, for me, uh, we're as American as apple pie or rice and beans or frijoles or whatever you call them, but the biculturalism is our superpower. And we're able to be effective in our role because we embrace that and we're in a community that accepts and respects and celebrates that. As we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, it's a moment to reflect on how those up, those values and that upbringing are influencing our ability to do our job. And when I'm around uh, these colleagues here, I just feel more empowered to embrace that latino and understand that that's why we're here and that uh, we're going to do our jobs better because we're able to engage um, as a, a bilingual, bicultural, and just understanding um, our upbringings and how that influenced where we are. So what a great moment to reflect on Hispanic Heritage Month and, and be around people that understand it and live it every day. So thank you for this opportunity. Great. Well, it is time to reflect on Hispanic Heritage Month and all the contributions, the great contributions that uh, so many incredible leaders are, are paving the way with. And I know that uh, you know, recently in my travels as we're celebrating small businesses and, and speaking to some of these great entrepreneurs, what rings true to me is that uh, we all have to stay true to who we are as people and bring that to the table because it adds such value uh, in whatever sector you're in and whatever uh, pursuit that you're challenging yourself with. I think that uh, we have to remember the, the value that we bring to the table. and. Uh, above all, just that grit and determination, that ganas that we all grew up with to just continue to try to do better for ourselves and our families and our communities is what really uh, carries our impact on the American dream and America broadly. Thank you all so much for your thoughtfulness and for your leadership, and thank you all for joining us today. Gracias.